Welcome to the Drunk Dietitians Podcast, co-hosted by your favorite tipsy registered dietitians, yours truly, Sammy Previtt, co-owner of Dietitians of Palm Valley, and Jenna Warner, owner of Happy Strong Healthy. Us dietitian besties can't stand diet culture bullshit and love keeping it real. Our mission is for all humans to believe that they are made for so much more than chasing a smaller body. We are also here to share with you that food can be fun and pleasurable again. Although we're medical professionals, we are human too. We are not afraid to share our deepest secrets and how years of our lives were taken by diet culture. We started this podcast so no human has to feel alone in their journey towards food freedom. So grab your favorite cocktail and join us for our favorite casual happy hour and expect to laugh, cry, learn, and grow. Cheers. All right. So we're going to jump right into this episode. So cheers, Jenna. Wait, my muscles aren't working today. I can't even open the bottle. There we go. The sweet sound. Cheers. Chug, chug. Cheers. Oh, that tastes good. Mm. Glad it's Friday. I was right, just guys. thinking that. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's good we record on Fridays. Let's just keep it at that. <laughs> so we're going to open every episode with a rapid fire question round. Now today, it's just your host. This is Sammy from Dietitians of Palm Valley. And I'm Jenna from Happy Strong Healthy. So we're going to rapid fire, do a little intro for you guys, tell our stories, why we're here. It's going to be a fun day. So I'm really first, excited. <laughs> yeah, this is very <laughs> exciting. So Jenna, ready? I'm ready. Hit me. Wine or beer? Wine. Coffee or tea? Coffee. Tequila or vodka? Vodka. I wanted to say tequila, but that would be a lie. <laughs> no or sand? Sand. Crunchy or smooth peanut butter? Oh my God, crunchy all day long. If you could have anything in the world with limitless quantities, but it can't be money, what would it be? My heart wants to say puppies, but then I think about raising them all and it would be like so much work. So maybe puppies and wine. Okay, there you go. That's a good one. That would be good for our podcast self. So I, will, I will agree with that. That's harder than it sounds. I can't wait to hear how you answer this. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready to go. All right. Wine or beer? Wine. Coffee or tea? Coffee. Snow or sand? Sand. Tequila or vodka? Tequila, 100%. Moment of truth right now. This is going to make or break us. Crunchy or smooth peanut butter? I'm freaking smooth. I, I understand <laughs> that for five seconds. And the, the crunchy ass little like things in there. It, ugh, it's like sand. I don't That like literally breaks my heart. I don't know if we can continue. <laughs> At least we both like peanut butter. Come on. That would, that would be bad. If someone right. says no peanut butter, they're not allowed on our show. By they're the way. out. Yes. All right. So if you could have anything in limitless quality quantities that is not money, what is it? See, this is a hard one because my gut says, like what I first thought of was limitless PTO days. Like, so you're always getting paid and then you're on vacation. And then you became an entrepreneur. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> work every day. So I'm going to say limit, I'm going to tie off of that and say limitless, like tropical villas. Like I could just have as many like apartments and Airbnbs that I can stay in. So, like, my question would be, would you be there by yourself or would you be with someone else? <laughs> Probably by myself. And my husband, <laughs> my husband can come, too. Well, that's um, fair. That's perfect. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, <clears throat> let's get started, though, and just kind of jump right in because I know we both have a lot to share. Um, so, I'm just going to intro Jenna here. Not going to say too much. She's going to tell her story. Woo! But For the first time ever, guys. This has yeah. never, ever been shared fully. Just saying that. I'm excited. Um, I'm sure I'll learn something too. But so Jenna and I are amazing friends, entrepreneurs that have now partnered in business, but more so we met because she was my boss. So to my favorite boss in the world, take it away <laughs> and share your story. So this is really like emotional for me in ways that I didn't expect because I remember going to school and being in college and it was like a no brainer. Like I was studying food because the lady asked me, what do you love? I said, food. She said, what else? I said, people. And it was like, 
oh my God, I have a career for you. Right. So like it always just felt meant to be for me once I knew what a dietitian was because going into college, I didn't, I don't know. <laughs> I, I didn't know until I had to enter the program. So. Right. Like when she was like, oh, have you ever heard of a dietitian? I was like, sure. Um, anyways, yeah. from there, I mean, it just seemed like from the outside looking in, like this was great for me. But I was remember sitting in classes and I remember when my professors were saying things like, when you apply for this internship, which by the way, I didn't know about, uh, didn't when know you apply either. for this internship, you know, you have to share your story. And just because you had a history of disordered eating doesn't mean you should be a dietitian. And I'll never forget that because I remember sitting in that classroom thinking, but I didn't have a history with disordered eating. Yeah. Like, hello. Like, and you start thinking like hard. My entire history of food and nutrition is disordered. And it stems back from when I was like six, seven, eight years old. Not that I had any thoughts about food at that time, but when I think back, all my cousins who I love with my whole heart, all girls up until my brother was born, um, and my boy cousin after that, but they're all tall, thin, like little pencils. And I was always the athlete and yeah. being an athlete's a beautiful thing. And, you know, I was the only one that ever played sports, but my body always looked different. So think about like that little girl growing up with muscles from nine years old, kicking a soccer ball, you know, surrounded by women in my family that are tall, long, lean, my cousin's nickname, I love her with my entire heart, but her nickname growing up was Stick. We're the exact same age. My nickname was Cow Eyes because my eyes are so big, but my nickname had a cow in it and hers was Stick. Oh, Why did we ever know that? Now you're learning something. Now I'm going to call you Cow Eyes. <laughs> Change your Instagram handle right now. Cow Eyes RD. Um, but like, <laughs> with that said, like, that's like, pretty, you know, there's my starting point. So, okay. all right. So looking back, you know, really thinking about it, like I never really loved my body. And back in the early 2000s before JLo was what she was, like asses weren't like cool. Like you were cool in high school if you had big boobs. I never had big boobs. I had the Me either. butt and I hated it. Okay. So like you start there, you start by the way that I didn't look like any model, anybody on TV. I was athletic and you know, I was eating. There was just there was no disordered history there, but I never liked myself. So that's setting your groundwork, right? I go to college, I'm studying nutrition, and I remember eating cheese and nuts as my diet throughout the entire college so that I couldn't eat anything. This was before I was diagnosed with my allergy, but so I wasn't eating anything so that I could binge on this alcohol all night long and then eat everything in the fridge or the pantry all weekend, all night, all week long and wake up. But I always exercised. Maybe that's where the obsession started. And it was like, I was always keeping myself at this zero. I was, you know, an unhealthy college student, but again, studying nutrition, there's nothing wrong with me. Right. So it was just this restrict binge day to night cycle that started there, but it was never a problem because I never looked unhealthy. I was yeah. college puffy but I wasn't unhealthy, if that makes sense, right? And I think when you say unhealthy, you mean like from society standards of what people think is unhealthy as being in a larger body, which is not or, true, we know, or but- super small. Yeah, yeah, true, right? true, like too thin. But it wasn't um, like I had an eating disorder that presented like what society believes an eating disorder looked like, but like, let's call a spade a spade. And this was before the word orthorexia became, you know- a thing or a diagnosis, I was incredibly unhealthy and it wasn't just disordered eating. I mean, there's an eating disorder there when you're restricting food all day, eating just fat, because I didn't obviously know what my macro needs were. But, <laughs> like we, and I think something else we didn't mention, but you went to Penn State, I went to Penn yes. State. So we went to this party school where and I'm sure other schools are similar. I know I can attest that Penn State was like this for me. Like that was normal. Like girls mm -hmm. were doing this and you were looking around. Everybody was binge drinking. It doesn't make it right. But that Your was. weekend started on Tuesdays, right? Yeah. Tuesdays. And then it was. No, we were tequila Tuesdays at Mad Max. All right. Well, it was different. Tuesday, it was still the weekend started on Tuesday at Penn State and it ended yeah. on Sunday. So like we had one day off. Oh shit. It was Mad Max <laughs> Monday. It was Mad Max Monday. I don't remember. So Sandy's yes. weekend started 
So it was every single day, but, but no, I agree with you. And I think now going back to eating disorder too, like there's so much more out there. Like atypical anorexia is literally the fear of gaining weight, but being atypical, I'm using air quotes for those who are listening you can be in any sized body and have anorexia. You don't have to be malnourished. Not exactly. saying that you did, but I'm just saying like what we know about eating disorders yes. now. And that's don't... why you can't judge a body by mm. the way it looks. You just can't. You can't judge yep. a person by their body. However, we want to trademark that yep. statement. But, you know, moving on. Okay, so I graduated college, did my internship. I'm now a dietitian with all this fucking knowledge. There you go. First, first F-bomb has hit. But with all of this knowledge and... I was probably the brink of not understanding what to do with that knowledge at that point. And this is like shortly before I met you, you know, let's just fast forward a couple of years. I got my clinical down, you know, I was still drinking, living in Hoboken and just living that unhealthy life. But, you know, fast forward to the times when you and I met and it was right before my wedding and right before my wedding, my Instagram handle of happy slim, that's now dead, healthy was born, um, was born as a way for me to hold myself air quotes accountable before my wedding so that I could, you know, fit in that dress. And the reality is in that statement is that's really where the problems of all of this world and our society really start is the reality that there's expectations about that wedding dress. But so, okay, Q, you and I met and I was trying any diet <laughs> that I could therefore talk to my clients about it which is such bullshit, right? <laughs> oh, there's the first spark from the UPS again. Sorry, guys. This won't happen again. Um, it's fine. But, we love but, dogs. Right? So, uh, puppies. Um, so, I was trying every diet just so that I could therefore talk to my clients about why they shouldn't do those diets. So at that time, as I'm coaching clients, counseling clients, meeting with people, telling them about why they shouldn't do the 21-day fix, I was doing it. <laughs> like, and I remember being like, should I do it? Like my boss <laughs> is doing it. And being like, but I don't the like containers, that. right? Yeah. Like the containers with me. And then I remember trying the blood type diet because the trainer told me to do that one. Uh, I know who you're talking about. No oh name. my God. <laughs> like, no name. And that was the dumbest thing ever, um, which has been dispelled by so many doctors since then for the record. But, you know, I don't want to make this last forever here, but I tried every single diet. You push that in with, I was detoxing. I was doing juice cleanses. I was taking laxatives on Monday more on Sunday nights before Monday morning so that I could feel lighter to start my diet on Monday. I was restricting carbohydrates. I was over exercising, but my body wasn't changing because my metabolism was fucked. Okay. So I was doing all of these things and for the record, hating my body in that process, but I was getting married. It was the happiest time of my life. My husband liked me as I was. So like, did it matter? You know, I wanted to feel beautiful in that dress. And I'll tell you, you know, I've told my bachelorette story a couple times, but I don't think I've ever shared that. Like on my wedding day, I was so malnourished that I was the drunkest in the room. <laughs> I don't think I know anything. <laughs> I definitely so, didn't even know you took laxatives. That was oh, yeah. to me. La oh I mean, gosh. smooth move tea. <gasps> Anybody ever tried that one before? Three <laughs> ballerinas. Like, Were you like on. shitting your pants at shopping? All day long. <laughs> All day long. Me and the homeless people were using that Hoboken bathroom all the time. <laughs> my office was right next door to it. Like, it was, like, fine, you know? So See, my store, the bathroom was a mile away, so I had my own your IBS problem. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't get to the bathroom. But. Uh, so, you know, I mean, while all this is happening, you know, my body's never really changing. I exercised. I was maintaining or whatever, but there was no change happening, like, on a physical standpoint. But, like, okay, so I was, I hadn't eaten carbs for so long before my wedding that I remember eating like a bagel or something that morning, just so I had something in my body and drinking starting from when I got my makeup done. And I was like wasted on champagne at like 9am. And by the time it was like the wedding was over, like, I think my hair extensions were falling out. Like my makeup was down. like, I was the drunkest person in the room. <laughs> um, but then that, and how I talk to my brides to be now, is all about how not to give up drinking before the wedding because you need a tolerance. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and don't for, give up carbs. Oh yeah, that's for sure. But that's for another day. But okay. So fast forward, you know, there was all the pills, all the whatever. I still never looked thin 
I still looked chubby in my eyes. And this is air quoting because this is my perception of myself, not society's. Yeah. Um, but in my mind, you know, I always loved fitness and exercise. And, you know, that was just like keeping me, it was fine. Nobody ever questioned me because I never looked different. Right. But like I was struggling. Like I wish I had a dietitian to help me at that point. But yeah. let's fast forward through all of the restrict binge abuse that happened. You know, I was searching to look differently. And so I started doing something different in my life. I started weightlifting and like weightlifting, like bodybuilding wise, right? So like that was something that I never tried. I moved out to the suburbs. I was bored, start weightlifting, pairing it with lots of high intensity training. And because all that's happening and my body starts changing, I was eating more than ever. So from an outside looking in, no one's ever questioned my health. Mm -hmm. and my mental health because I was eating so much to maintain this higher muscle mass, right? But I was working out three hours a day, four hours a day, lifting, taking multiple classes, lifting, going for a run, doing this in like private again. So like nobody was really questioning it. And I was being fucking praised for how I started to look. Yeah. And that sparked like the true disorder of like the mental health, physical health, aspect because nobody thought there was anything wrong with me because I was eating, I was exercising, on the outside looking in, I was healthy, but I was literally the most unhealthy I've ever been. And let's go into like the, the female aspect of it. When you're malnourished for so long, your reproductive organs stop working, right? Like that's one of the first systems to shut down. I didn't get my period on my own for probably two years. It was like once every four months, which I was pretty much diagnosed with PCOS because of that. Um, I was, you know, they were like, oh, well, you probably don't have it. Like you're so thin, your body fat's low, blah, blah, blah. You know, just keep taking the pill. Okay. Thanks doc. Right. Yeah. So I lost my period. I literally didn't leave my house. I couldn't drink alcohol. I couldn't go out. I couldn't go out to dinner. Every time I went out to eat, my stomach hurt because I was just not eating normal foods outside of what I had you know, was feeding myself that my body just couldn't even handle like anything outside of what I was eating for myself or giving myself. Yeah. Um, I was just eating nonstop, but it was my own foods, high protein, you know, the whole thing. It was just red flag after red flag after red flag. I lost relationships with my family. I lost relationships with friends. I lost relationships with my brother. I remember him being like, I feel like I haven't talked to him forever. And it's like, because I didn't, I didn't have that time for anyone but myself. Okay. Yeah. Like if you were not at the gym with me, we weren't seeing each other. And so like from the standpoint of healthy, happy and healthy and happy, I was lost. And from that slim perspective, which is why that name is dead, I was, Kill it off. I was at my peak and just the most unhealthy I've ever been. So, all right. So the red flags are all there. And so now that you know that I'm out of that phase, how that happened, you know, I really had to take the reins back. And to say that within the past two years now, this is that recent, you know, I've had to really do a lot of therapy. I've had to do a lot of soul searching. I've had to do a lot of like mental health work to really figure out, you know, the problem was never with food. The problem was never with nutrition. The problem was with my body dysmorphia that I've never yeah. once admitted in any space ever until right now. So anyone who's listening, you know, the body dysmorphia I'm describing has been stemming since I was like 12 years old. Yeah. Right. And I'm 32 now. So what's that 20 years later to admit that out loud that, you know, gaining six pounds that I have over the past two years, like has helped me get a period back, has helped me, you know, stabilize my body, have energy, be able to leave the house to do all of these things and like find a way to tell my story to help other people. So, you know, the reality is, is that when I stopped doing my three hour workouts, my body stopped looking that way. And so from a sustainability perspective, like it just answers that for you. Like what I was doing was not only unhealthy, but it was unsustainable. And that's why these diets and, you know, all of that doesn't work. And I can feel so confidently saying that out loud because 
it doesn't last. It doesn't work. And your mental health is so much more important than your physical health. And I'm going to end this with, you know, the fact that I remember going to the doctor after getting, after eating more, gaining about six pounds. And I finally went back to the doctor to tell her that I had gotten my period back. Okay. So it's the OBGYN and the nurse is doing like the intake. I hadn't been there in six months. And, um, I remember her doing all my questions and stuff like that. And she was like, asking me, why are you here? This and that. And I'm like, well, I have really great news today. Like I've gotten my period for the past four months in a row. Like that hasn't happened in my entire life ever. And she was like, um, okay, like great, blah, blah, blah. I took the notes and she was like, all right, so you've gained about six pounds since the last time you were here. Like, do you want to talk about it? Like blah, blah, blah. And I was like, are you out of your fucking mind? <laughs> like, did Excuse you hear me? what I just said? Are you <laughs> like, fucking kidding me? Like, like that's, did you I, hear what I just said? When I first like, heard this story, like, I wanted to go find out who that nurse was. <laughs> it was, and just, because, I can't like, even say. And, like, let's say this how it is. Like, if I wasn't me understanding how okay that was, if I was even me six years before that, like, that or how said, good that was for you. Like, right, your body needed yes. to gain weight. It doesn't matter about the number, but it needed to gain weight to yes. get its, your, your, its period back. And like, if I wasn't okay with that, that would have sent me into a spiral of epic proportion. So like my, the moral of my story is I've been everywhere that you've been, whoever's listening, right? Like I've been there, I've tried it, I've done it. I've done the over-exercising, I've done the under-exercising, the overeating, the under-eating, the hating myself to now learning, continuously learning how to love myself, right? Like it's a work in progress. But the reality is, is that, you know, our world right now doesn't understand what healthy looks like because it looks different on every single person and every single body. And I think that's a lot of what the message that we collectively share in different ways, but want yep. to share with people listening because we've been there. We've lived it. We've done it. So now you know how fucked up I've been. <laughs> Chug that wine, Jenna. It's not at all. And I'm here to tell you that it doesn't have to be like that anymore. Yeah. Um, so uh, let's segue that into, so we don't make this like a 12-hour episode here. Let's oh my segue gosh, that's fine. into Sammy's story. And, you know, the moment I met Sammy back, I remember the place and the space and the meeting. She had this smile like you've never seen on her face before, like full of life, so bubbly. She's always loved food. Like you always were like, I became a dietitian because I love food. Like that yeah. was always you. We connected instantly. Like I was obsessed with her from day one. And you know, the way that you've transformed your message and what you do for people has been like such a gift for me as your friend to really watch. Um, and I want to hear how it all came to be. So cheers to you. It's your turn. Oh, well, thank you. I'm going to chug well before I start. <laughs> but I just want to, before I start, like, I mean, I know you, I've known you through that transition and I feel like I learned so much even just right now. And it's, it's hard to share your story like that. But I think once you, like you said, you're like, I know that this doesn't work, like the dieting and, the, and all of that stuff. Like once you truly know it doesn't work, it's almost like as hard as it is to share your story, it's like you just want to scream it from the rooftop because you want to be like, guys, like you don't have to do this. And I think that's where like our podcast, it's so exciting that we have this platform now yes. that we can share this with people outside of, of course, like our Instagrams and, and whatnot. So anyways, thank you for sharing. So our stories are like pretty parallel in, in, a, di in a different way, though. Um, but we do have a lot of similarities. We have Penn State. We have Hoboken, like drinking excessively. Now Retail bringing it dietetics. To yeah, right? So, but I would say I actually wrote, I was challenged by our marketing team to like write my story. They were like, like, what, like, how did you get here? Like, why are you here? And I was like, I don't know. Like, I never really had to think about it. And then I think I, I sat down. I was like, okay, I'm going to think about this. Like, what, how did I get to where I am right now? And I think it all comes down to, like, you said this so well. Like, it's not about food or nutrition. Going into dietetics, there's a huge diversity problem where we don't have diversity as dietitians. We're all thin white women who have disordered eating pretty much. So that's like a whole nother episode. <laughs> that we'll, we'll definitely get some we diverse. That. Oh my gosh. Yeah. There's so many wonderful diverse women and men and bigger bodies that can speak on that. But 
But so I think when we look at dietitians traditionally, we all have a similar story because we all went into dietetics to find like the answer, right? Air quotes, the answer. Um, so, but I think my disorderedness, just like understand it, mine definitely started in high school. I was always, I was, I have thin, I call it thin privilege. And this is something again, future podcasts we'll talk all about, but I was always in a thin body. Um, parents are tall. So I was always like a string bean. Um, and then I underwent like some pretty bad trauma as a child and, and lost a best friend in a car accident. Um, I discovered alcohol as a teen and then my body just changed and my relationship with food changed. My world was spiraling out of control as an 18 year old. I just lost like basically my sister. So I was like, what the fuck? Like I have no control. So then couldn't even look at food for a while. Like I remember I lost a lot of weight after she passed away and thinking like a little part of me, this is how fucked up our culture is, never was happy that she passed away. But I do remember being like, well, at least I lost weight. Like the fact that that thought even like resonates in my head or that I had it is ridiculous. But so I remember that. Yeah. And then, so that happened. And then once that grieving process started happening and I could like be in front of food, then it was like food was like comfort. And it was like when no one was around, I could just like be happy or just get like lost for a little bit and not think about her, her death or my other friend who was in the car who was like recovering from the accident. So that was a huge part of it, which is crazy because I didn't know that for the longest time until now what I know with intuitive eating and mm -hmm. trauma with food and dieting that a lot of it stems from these things that you don't even like connect. Um, so yeah, so that's where it definitely started. And then I, I remember too, like I specifically remember I had a notebook in my nightstand in high school that I would like track my weight because I started gaining weight and thinking like, okay, I don't want to see it go over this number. Like I have no idea where these numbers came from, what I was doing. I was tracking calories. Like I have no idea why, like no one told me to do it. Um, but I just have Media. those memories. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. Oh God. Yeah. Influenced Media. by magazines at that point. Yeah. And like maybe friends and family made a comment of like, you're looking a little, you know, out of puffy. love. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> puffy, whatever they want to say. And, and that might've triggered it, but I don't even really know, but I do know going into college, went to Penn State undecided, knew I wanted to help people, whether it was nursing or teaching or something, always loved food, always loved exercise, was an athlete, but had this weird disordered relationship. So I think when I heard about nutrition, I was like, oh, this is great. Like I'll go to college and I'll figure out the answer on how to be perfect and lose weight. And like, life's going to be great. And then quickly learned that I did not find that answer. And actually college catapulted me even worse. Um, <laughs> it became more of a mess. And again, I think like you said, like probably would, I don't know if I would diagnose myself as an orthorex, like orthorexic at that time, but obsessed with, yeah, eating healthy, exercising, but then like extreme binging on alcohol, drunk food, pizza, any of my Penn Staters, gumbies from Pokey <laughs> Sticks. So like it started with this like, and I was a nutrition major with a kinesiology minor. I was a trainer on campus right. at the gym. So like, oh, I have to look good. It was just this whole thing. Um, but I do remember like walking across the stage on graduation day being like, I don't know. Like I'm about to become a dietitian. I got accepted to this dietetic internship, whatever that is. And I was like, and I don't know like the answer. Like, I was like, say that. That's because, so it's, good. because it's just like you, you literally were like, oh yeah, I'm going to be a dietitian. And then it's like, why? What the fuck is that? <laughs> yeah. Like, why? <laughs> what is that? Um, unless you're going to go the clinical route where you want to calculate tube feeds and like do all that yeah, like no. numbers, like which is not <laughs> us. Um, no. So yeah, so then went to my dietetic internship. Honestly, fucking hated it. Um, <laughs> like, I the only thing I will say, I hated the internship. I loved my interns, like, with me. We were awesome. Like, there was 12 of us. So tight-knit. Um, Haley Goodrich, who I'll talk about in a bit, was sat next to me. She's now in private practice. One of the leading Hayes Health at Every Size dietitians, who will definitely get on this podcast at some time. Um, and then many others that deserve to be praised as well. But we all were just like, 
what is this? Like you're going to food service and like loading dishes on a cart. You're going to clinical where the doctors would just like scratch off your tube feet and not give a shit what you said. Like everything <laughs> I did, I was like, this sucks. Like, <laughs> I was like, all and, the physicians can relate to this. <laughs> yes. And on top of all of that, I hated my body. So I was like, <laughs> I was like, why? Like, what am I doing? And I was living it. me the right to help people. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. So I was just like, what the hell? So that happened. But then got, I was very blessed that one of my rotations was in a grocery store or in a grocery store. And and I was like, oh, this is kind of cool because I like food and you can really help the community and the, the general population. And then, so then enter Jenna is when I got a job after I became a dietitian. Her first job. Her first job. Moved to Hoboken, <laughs> um, which was an extension of Penn State and just party, party, party. In my notes, like I had put like, there's like two phases to Hoboken. And Jenna will, Jenna will definitely attest to this. There was the before Luke, who is my now husband phase. <laughs> and there was the after Luke, or like oh. during and after Luke phase. <laughs> And the before, I knew both. <laughs> yes. And the before Luke was literally what you guys have heard about this entire time, where like I didn't take care of myself, my behaviors were horrendous. Um, I didn't really like dietetics, and like, but then I met Luke, and he just like challenged me hmm. to like take care of myself, and but not to. He was never like eat healthy. He, I mean, he's an Italian from. Oh, he Jersey. was like instead of let's binge drink, let me take you to a nice dinner, and we were all like, "Who's this guy?" Yeah, <laughs> like, <laughs> He clearly didn't go to Penn State. Um, but so, but he just like started to make me think differently about habits and behaviors. And, and so I actually, like, I was only in Hoboken for two years, but my second year, I, that's when I started intuitive eating, but I didn't know that was a thing. Like I did that and my habits started to get better. I started to feel better. I started to like, like myself, not because my body was changing, but just because I was taking care of it. Um, and then Jenna hated me because oh, worst day of my life. <laughs> because I came into work and I was like, I'm moving to Florida. And Jenna, I was like, "Fuck you." Yeah, <laughs> we. Cr- I cried the entire time that I was telling her and my other boss. But I was so mean to her. <laughs> yeah, she, she took it very personal. Uh, but clearly, we got over it. Um, but. I didn't want to move because the jobs in Florida, where I am now in Jacksonville, were all clinical, which again, not bashing clinical dietitians, they do amazing work, but it just wasn't for me. And so I looked on a website, found Mindy, um, who is my now business partner, who is like one of the most, I'm going to, I'm not going to stretch it. This is true. She's one of the most world renowned sports dietitians, especially Mm -hmm. in America with the NFL. And so partnered with her came down here, started seeing clients in a private practice setting, but big, but it was still weight management. It was still weight loss centered. It was still weight centric. It was still diet culture. And I was like, this didn't work for me. How is this going to work for all of these people? And I just felt like I was like a phony. Like I felt like when I was counseling them, I was uncomfortable I can't promise weight loss. I have no idea how your body is going to respond. Um, And a lot of the people were similar to me and Jenna where they had this trauma, this, they were teased by their, by their parents or their friends or their family or by their weight. They were always told to be in a smaller body. They had a disordered relationship with food, you know? And so I was like, they don't need us to tell them what to eat on a diet. Like they need intuitive eating. And that's where Haley enter Haley from my internship really broke off in her private practice and started teaching the intuitive eating principles, went to a health at every size movement, um, in her practice. And I was like, what's this? And that's where I actually found like, this is an actual science based evidence. Um, there's over a hundred studies on it. And I was like, oh my God, that's what I did. I just didn't know it was a thing. (laughs) Um, and so we'll definitely get into that more in future podcasts, but and that's where our practice is today is we're continuously evolving. Um, we do not believe in intentional weight loss because if we'll use Jenna's story as an example for Jenna to be a air quotes, healthier person, her body needed to gain weight. Right. Yes. And so, so that's where kind of just like, again, I feel like I'm rambling, but that's where with my story and being here now, it was like, I finally found the answer and it's that dieting fucking sucks and there is no diet that works and everybody's 
body is different. Everybody looks different. We don't try to make a French bulldog turn into a German shepherd and vice versa with dogs. So why as humans are we trying to shape shift? Why can't we just work on how to enhance our health in a physical, emotional, mental, spiritual way versus here, eat 1200 calories. Yeah. So, Can you share too? I mean, just based on what you're just saying, like when you were like, let's call it what it, what it is like yeah. the post college Sammy, yeah. you know, and you were obsessed with food, right? Like you were saying, yeah. like you're obsessed with what you were eating compared to how your body changed when you started. Cause I think there's a lot of misconceptions about yeah. intuitive eating. Yeah. Like you weren't intentionally trying to change your body, but what happened when you stopped obsessing about cutting carbs and binging, restricting all of that? Like you've shared pictures of yourself. Yes. Like how yes, did so your body change on its own? Yeah. So that's a really good question. And I want to be very, say this very gingerly when I explain yeah. it. Intuitive eating, the purpose of it is not weight loss. So if somebody comes into our practice and says, I want to intuitively eat to lose weight, well, no, you actually can't do that. Like that's right. not what it's about. For me and, and a lot of other dietitians, Laura Thomas, Christy Harrison, Haley Goodrich explain this probably a lot better than I can at this point. But if you are above your set point weight, which, and we can talk again, I feel like I'm just saying future podcasts, but- Get ready this, guys. <laughs> yeah, right? This set point theory is that our body has this weight that it feels most comfortable at. The easiest way to find that set point weight if you're not restricting, if you're not binging, if you're not obsessing about food, what weight does your body naturally fall at? So for me personally, yes, my body is smaller now than, I, than it was when I was obsessing about food and I had very disordered thoughts, but I love to put a huge disclaimer with that. Yes. That for people listening, that does not mean that if you are in a disordered place right now, that if you do intuitive eating, you're going to lose weight and you're going to be in this happy yeah. butterfly rainbow land. Um, but at the end of the day, you can be a healthier person with intuitive eating by using health promoting behaviors such as mental health, hydration, movement that feels good, eating with attunement, which means like, okay, yeah, you can have 47 donuts if you want them. You have the permission for that, but is that going to make you feel good? Mm -hmm. But again, coming from a huge place of restriction, when you're in front of 47 donuts, it feels like you can eat them all and you want to because you're not, air quotes, allowed to have that. So, so yes, personally, my body did change because I was definitely above my set point weight mm -hmm. um, for my personal body. But again, everybody, everybody's story everybody's is different. Within two, different. Everybody is different. <laughs> so the only last thing I'll say about my story is the way people most recognize us, if you're listening to this podcast and follow Dietitians of Palm Valley, not is, anymore. Well, technically, no, we're, we're still dietitians of Palm Valley, but the <laughs> handle is now Break Diet Rules. I just felt like it encompassed more of our message. Yes. But we do the Fuck Diet Culture Friday set series. And the way that started was because I just got so sick of people talking about diets and, and just wasting their time, money, energy, like mental bandwidth. Um, and now we're here. I love it. Here. It's full circle. So, I mean, I think that like for anybody listening, like Sammy and I are different and the same. And I hope, like my hope is that we can use this platform that if somebody is listening to this and it's like, wow, those girls and I have so much in common, like keep listening, like stay with us. We are going to just continue to help in whatever way we can, you know, help you not feel alone because- Dietitians are not the only ones that struggle with disordered eating in the past. And there are just, there's just so much more to life than obsessing about food, right? And Absolutely. I think our purpose is to help people stop yeah. um, because I mean, it feels so much better to be drinking at noon on a Friday and not worrying about it, right? Versus where I was a couple years ago where it was yeah. like, it didn't matter when it was, like alcohol was the devil. I had no yeah. fun. And for some people it might still be, and that's a whole different story, but like yeah. whatever that devil is to you, you know, anything that has that kind of control over you cannot be in a safe space in your, in your life, in your life. Yeah. 
And a lot of people, and I've seen this before on Instagram where it says like obsessing about food and exercise doesn't make you healthier. Like (laughs) just because you obsess about it doesn't make you a healthier person. And that's really our society's come to. And so as Jenna was saying with this podcast, it's not only going to be, so of course we'll do some just us two. We're going to bring other dietitians on. We have OBGYNs up, um, trainers, mental health therapists, like so many resources outside of just nutrition, but also like clients of ours will definitely Mm-hmm. come on and share their stories because their story, everybody's story is different. Um, and so as we close out our podcast, we always want to do play on words here, a nutrition <laughs> tipsy. So like tipsy, <laughs> get it? Nutrition tipsy, drunk dietitians. So today's tip is kind of a, it's a tip, but it's also just like a blanket statement that- It's really going to set the tone. <laughs> it's really going to set the tone for the rest of the podcast. We don't give a fuck what you eat. (laughs) And I want to just say that with a very clear, like, period, mic drop. Um, (laughs) Dietitians, if there's someone giving, if they're a dietitian, they're giving you a 1,200 calorie diet, chances are they're probably still disordered. I don't give a fuck. I'm just going to say it. Um, So we're here to dig a little deeper. And if you have habits or behaviors, why do you have those behaviors? Mm -hmm. What's been going on? Like, what is your health like from a physical, mental, emotional, social, spiritual, like standpoint? Um, So your tip this week is that like, we don't give a fuck what you eat. We're not judging you. Um, We're just here to help and start an honest conversation. Yeah. And we want you to know on top of that, that nutrition to be honest with you, it's really not about food, guys. And that's what we're here to talk about. It's, nope. I, mean, I would call it, and this is totally made up, but like 90% of people out there can probably pick out of a lineup what's more nutrient dense of, uh, if you lined up five different types of food, yep. right? That's not the issue. Yep. That's not the issue with our society today. And here we're going to help you kind of figure out how to navigate through that. I love it. I love it. it. Let's leave it there. Yeah. We're just going (laughs) to wrap it up. But uh, there's a lot of of cool stuff ahead, um, and we can't wait to share it with you guys. We're going to word vomit it all to you. Get ready. Yeah. Get ready. (laughs) Here we go. Guys, thank you so much for listening and being here with us. I am virtually cheersing all of you. We absolutely love sipping on a cocktail with you and sharing as many nutrition tipsies as possible during this episode. We know there are a ton of pods out there, and we are so appreciative of your time that you spent listening to us today. Please be sure to check out the show notes for episode details and all of our guest information. We promise to keep bringing you the best and the most knowledgeable and fun guests we possibly can. Please be sure to subscribe, like, share, and post if you enjoyed our content today. And visit us on Instagram and Facebook at Drunk Dietitians to find out what is up next for us on the pod. We absolutely love you. We appreciate you and can't wait to spend more time cheersing with you soon.